Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how I made a waterfall card. Now, <laughs> you need to hear a bit of backstory about waterfall cards. So I was first shown waterfall cards years ago. I mean, we're talking years ago. Um, and I made one and I really wasn't happy with it. Um, it didn't really work very well. It was a bit floppy. It kind of fell apart. And I just kind of got a bit confused with the whole mechanism. And I never touched waterfall cards after that. However, one of my craft ladies asked if they could do it in class. So I set about defeating the waterfall card. <laughs> I wouldn't say I defeated the waterfall card, but anyway, we got there. We got there. So this is the one we're going to do today. This is the size we're going to do today. OK, so for any of you who don't, I haven't completely finished this card yet. I just haven't had time. So basically you pull this bit at the bottom and it all flicks down like that. It's great. It's a lovely card and it's just very, you just want to sit and do this all day. Um, it's very nice. So that's the one I did. Um, this one I used um, Do Craft papers. I think they were called Cherry Blossom. I'll put all the links as I normally do in the description below. So just click on the link and it will take you through if, if I can find it. Because some of these papers are old papers, so they're not available anymore. Um, so you might want to do your own you know, inquiries and see if you can find them. Uh, but where possible, I will link them. Uh, so yeah. So that was the one we did in class. So that's the sizes we will be doing. Um, I did do venture out and did a larger one. And these again were old toppers that I had. I don't know. I'm not sure who made them. I don't know who they're by. And um, this paper was Paper Boutique. I know that. Um, but yeah, so this is another one that I did. And I do like this larger size, but I did have a bit of a trouble figuring out the measurements for it. Uh, so we're not going to be doing that one because I struggled with that one. Then I really went off the rails and I did this one. This was using um, the new Indigo Blue um, magazine stamp, which I'm going to show you now. So basically, this is the new Indigo Blue magazine. And I'm pretty sure this is the new one. As I said before, I don't really keep up with magazines. Uh, so I never know which issue is new, which one's not. But this is um, issue 116. I think I'm pretty sure this is the new one. Um, yeah, I'm pretty so I got this one from Craft Stash, but you can also get them in Tesco, as the most local, you know, places that sell magazines. Um and it came with this set. So you get um you get some dies. I quite like the little foliage dies, I thought that was quite cute. The word bloom, this outline die, which I believe cuts that um foliage out, a stencil, and then this beautiful butterfly, and this is what sold me the magazine, to be honest with you, because that is such a beautiful butterfly. I wish that they had a die that went with it, but we don't. So I fussy cut them all out, which took me forever. Um, but I have since found I have actually got a die, a large die that cuts out almost the right you know, size and shape. As you can see, I've missed part of the wing here, but it's not bad. So I think so. I've cut a whole load out, which I was going to do. a. I was actually going to do the butterfly card today on the... Um, on the tutorial however i decided that not everyone's going to have access to this this um magazine if you're in if you're not in the uk you're in america you might not have access to this magazine and you also might not have access to the butterfly die that i used so i just thought you know what let's not do that let's stick to nice and square um, and then if you've got dies if you haven't you'll still be able to make this card so that's what we're going to do today but yeah so this is the new magazine it's very nice got some wonderful things in it and as i said it's um it was just i just really liked that sold it for me i do like some of these as well i love the foliage that are there this is beautiful but yeah so that's that's what sold it that butterfly thank you very much so this is the butterfly one um and it took me forever to colour all those in, I use Twinkling H2Os to colour them in, but you could use any kind of, you know, paint or um, like watercolour, watercolour paint or like metallic watercolour paint. Um, there's a few places that do them, to be honest, um, but mine were Twinkling H2Os. Um, yeah, and then the papers on this was the Bloom and Wonder. I think it's called Bloom and Wonder. Again, I will link it to below. Um, papers from Trimcraft, so I use those. This is that stamp again, and I did struggle putting this together. Um, I had lots of disasters with this. Uh, it was a bit of a nightmare. At one point, I didn't think it was actually even going to come together. The other thing as well was I was planning to not do it on a 5 by 7 folding card like that, because when you stand it up, it just wants to fall forward. So it kind of needs to be a top fold 
card if you're doing a five by seven portrait um and that this one i is, is the same i mean this one does stand up i think this oh no so this one yeah <laughs> this is the one we did in class and actually we decided it didn't it didn't stand up my kit falling so i've actually cut that side off and so it's just a card now and i'm intending to stick another bit on here so it will top it'll stand up like that and it'll be like a tent fold so it'll be like that way around um so yeah so anyway enough of my waffling on um i think i've pretty much gone through everything there uh so we are going to do one like this but i'm going to do it this way round, so that you pull it off this way and the card obviously folds and stands up like oh it's the other way around it'll stand up like that so it'll be a tent fold like that but it'll pull off to the right okay so that's what i'm going to do today but if you want to do it this way around it's exactly the same you just might need to you know tweak your actual card base and stuff right so enough waffling let's get on with it so you are going to need a five by seven card blank if you haven't got a five by seven card blank you just need a seven by ten inch piece of card fold it in half on the ten inch edge to make a at five inches to make a five by seven card blank so that's my five by seven i'm going to have it this way round and i'm going to keep it this way round to remind me that's the way we're going to make the card you will also need a mat layer that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters and a pattern layer that is four and a half by six and a half. If you have paper that's a right way up, make sure, and you're going to do it landscape, make sure that you cut it so that it is actually landscape. If I was using this paper on the back, I would have done that wrong because obviously it won't work. OK, so just make sure. So I'm going to go ahead and stick uh, my pattern onto my mat and my mat onto the front of my card. Okay, so I've stuck my card, my, you know, mat and pattern down on front of my card. I'm going to put this to one side now. We'll come to, back to that later. So what you're also going to need, you're going to need five three by three mat squares and five two and three quarter by two and three quarter pattern squares or topper squares. So obviously on this one, I've actually cut out. I've used the Let's Celebrate, first edition Let's Celebrate papers, and I've used the 12 by 12s, which means that the patterns are all quite big so actually you can use them as like embellishments ephemera i guess is what you know so i've actually cut out um and if you've got dies you can use dies but i've deliberately not used dies because the ndc the non-die community so you are now officially called the ndc the ndc don't necessarily i mean you're not you don't have dies so um yeah so i've done it for the ndc okay Big up the NDC. Oh, you've got your own little name now. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I've done it. For those who haven't, haven't got dies. So, I've just literally used my trimmer and I've cut them down. And what I did, actually, I made a little square. And uh, just cut a little three by three square out. Um, and then just lay it on your card and you can kind of see. I did actually use my dies to see. So, I could trace around the outside. But you don't need to do that. You can, you know, roughly guess. So, I've just cut these out. And this is all out of pattern paper. Um, if you want to, you can do what I did on this one. So again, this was cut out of pattern paper, but the next one on I actually stamped and I am going to color, I'm going to color that in at some point. You could stamp on all your squares and color them all in if you're into that. You could also do one or two or however many you want with little greetings on if you want to, like that. You might even want to have photos of people on here. Almost make it like a little mini album, maybe. That might be quite good, especially if someone's leaving. It might be quite a good leaving card. You could have little pictures of everyone on there. Um, and that was just pattern paper. You can literally do whatever you want. Um, and obviously on that bigger one that I did, this one, this was actually, these were actually pre-cut squares. So all of, so this was just like a blank. This birthday wishes wasn't on it. I stamped that on, but everything else was on it, printed. And then little, you know, thing of a chrysanthemum, what it means, etc. This was a circular one, but I've just stuck it onto a square. Um, that one, again, I've stamped that. It was just, you know, the printing and everything was on it, but not the greeting. And then that was already there. So you literally just use what you've got um, and just try and be creative with what you've got and see what you can do. Um, if you wanted to and you had maybe a smaller butterfly, you can maybe get a butterfly and stick it in the middle of your square. It's really up to you what you want to put inside it. Um, so yeah, so five squares of whatever you're going to use. Um, and then I'm now going to go ahead and stick these onto my five mat squares.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and stuck all my squares down. So I'm going to put those to one side and we're going to bring in two more pieces of card. Now I've done these as matte card. It's really up to you what you want to use. If we look back at what I have used on this one. So on this one I've used, so this is the bit that you use for the pulley and also for the little stopper. I don't know if you can see the little stopper there. Um, so I've actually used the matte card on this one, which I quite like, and I cut out a pattern piece to go on it. So that's that one. Um, on this one, I actually used a piece of pattern paper, which I don't like so much. Um, I do and I don't. I think that I should have, if I was going to do this, I should have used this, um, use a mat and then put that on top of it because it kind of blends in a bit with the background. But anyway, we live and learn. And on this one, I just used the base. And also because it was so low, I added a little bit of um, ribbon on the end just so you've got something to pull because you can't really get to that tab. So it's really up to you what you use. But whatever you use, you don't want it to be too thin. This is about a 300 GSM, which I would say I would say the minimum you want to go is probably about a 250. Don't go any lower than a 250 uh, because you want it to be nice and solid because it's your main pulling mechanism. So your whatever you, card you choose, um, this one needs to be an inch wide by 11 inches long. And this one here needs to be one inch wide by two and three quarters of an inch. So this we don't need to score. That can go off to one side. This one we do need to score. So it needs to be scored at six inches, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight and eight and a half. OK, so that's all that scoring there. Now, the other thing as well you need to think about is on this one, this is single sided. When I used the matte card on the Chinese, on the uh, Cherry Blossom card, I did actually, it's double sided card. So you don't really have to think about which side is which. But with this one, I do. So because when you pull it, I want to be able to see this. This is the bit I want to be able to see. I don't want to be able to see white. I want to see the metallic. So because of that, I'm going to need to fold on that six inch um, line. I need to fold along that six inch line so that my colour is on the inside. Now you probably just noticed that when I folded that, it's skewed to one side. So just make sure when you fold it along the score line, just make sure it's actually nice and straight. Otherwise, you're gonna, it's not going to work. OK, so I've done that like that. So I'm now going to go along and fold along all of these score lines exactly the same way. So I'm just going to fold them all in, make sure they're straight, and burnish them into place. So you should end up with that. That's what it looks like. Now, obviously, this is all white, but don't worry about that because you're not actually going to see any of that. If you stick with the measurements I'm giving you for the squares, you won't see it. If you change your measurements for the squares, uh, you will need to re-figure out what this needs to be because the length of this will change if you use bigger squares or if you use smaller squares. The same with this. This length here will change if you use a bigger or smaller square. So just bear that in mind. And now we're going to go ahead and start sticking our squares on. Now I've seen um, mixed ideas of whether you're supposed to start at the bottom and work your way up or if you start at the top and work your way down. Uh, I think I find it easier to start at the bottom and work my way up, um, but it's really up to you. So to start with, you want to put red tape on every single one of these little half inch sections. Now I have got half inch red tape. But I have found in the past, when I've used the half inch red tape, I sometimes end up with a sticky residue just at the top here of each section because it literally does fit exactly. So I'm actually going to use my slightly narrower tape and I'm just going to make sure that when I stick it on, I stick it near the top of that section like that. There's a little bit of a gap, as you can see, um, but I'm just... Obviously, a bit, a bit of bit of a bigger gap at the bottom, but it's not such a problem at the bottom. As long as most of your half inch thing is covered, your half inch section is covered with red tape. That's your main concern. And actually, once you get down, look, see that next section. It's not so bad. For some reason these sections are varying. I don't know why, but anyway. So yes, yeah, so we're just going to go down now and just fill all of these sections up with red tape. So I also find that the stamp positioner is a good idea. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm just going to lay this in. On this side, I've got like naught to, you know, three inches here. So I can just position it so it's halfway, not halfway, but central between 
three inches um, and then I'm just going to put my magnets on the mechanism like that and I've deliberately turned it round because I literally have just stuck it down the wrong way and I've had to edit that bit of the video out okay so we all make mistakes me all the time so yes anyway as I was saying so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit of backing off I've already taken that bit off because I was up to the second one um, and then we're going to put this on I'm going to line it up with the top here and then just make sure when I put it on that I am ooh, making sure I'm not going past that crease line okay so that's like that then I've already taken the second one off so I'm going to go for the next square I want to have on which is the dog so I'm going to line it up here and I'm going to stick that down onto there like that okay I'm going to take the next one the other backing off line it up at the top and then stick it down now they're a little bit wonky you can see a little bit wonky going on but this is sort of what happens sometimes with these things next one that's the ice cream so we'll line it up make sure we get it up to that crease line and no further stick it down and last but not least we have the polar bear no he's not a polar bear he's a panda i don't even know my bears so that's that there we go right so we've stuck them all down in the right place Hurrah. okay so once you've stuck your squares down you're now going to use your little one inch by two and three quarter piece um now you will also need some pattern paper um, and you will need a pattern paper strip that is one and a quarter by four and three quarters so this is going to go on this inside bit here okay ignore this you see can you see this bit here this is because i stuck my strip here and then realized that it's not right i told you this waterfall card really and don't even look at this so I'm <laughs> just making a mess of this card. Oh my goodness, I'm never doing this ever again. No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad once you master it. It's just my head can't fathom it, that's all. There's certain things my head can't get, get, get round, and this is one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this down here. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and stuck that down um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stick the little stopper bit on the end here okay so you just want to stick it nice and centrally on the end now really you should stick it on there before you go ahead and stick your flaps down which I thought I had done however I stuck it in the wrong place so there we go so I'm just going to now um, put that over the top and I've also not trimmed that very straight either bear with Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and stick this little strip over the bottom there and we're just going to stick it onto that white bit, nowhere else. So I'm just going to lay that on and I'm going to draw a little pencil line so I know roughly where I'm sticking my red tape. Um, and then we need to go and add red tape onto that bottom section there. Okay, so I've just peeled the backing off, so now I'm to go ahead and stick this on. Um, I mean the advantage of me doing it after is that I've got the squares to line it up so I can get it nice and central I suppose that's something um, so I'm going to stick this on here oh I've gone off a little bit doesn't matter that's not straight oh dear that's really not straight but you know what it's going to have to do okay it's not straight but it's fine because it's going to be hidden anyway okay so if like me look how look how crooked that is dear me what a nightmare I'm having <laughs> today I really am oh my days right so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add red tape onto the other side of this tab so you should end up with a better looking version than what i've got here so we've stuck that down so now i'm going to do is i'm going to close the whole lot up and if i just turn it over you'll see you can see your tabs there so then we're going to bring our card back in make sure it's tent fold like that 
make sure that you put this the right way around because today anything could happen um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to stick that down and we're going to make sure that obviously you've got the same kind of border there it's kind of central top and bottom and we're going to stick it down so we're going to take the tab the backing off the tabs like this take it and then we're going to stick it down making sure it's central Okay, so like that. And then what happens is then, hopefully, you should, yeah, oh, be able to pull them and they all open up. Yes, it has worked. Oh, right, it's a little sticky bit here. Just make sure, the only thing that you might find is if you've got a bit of tape stickiness there, just right on the top of that tab there, it might want to stick. So just go through and unstick it if you need to. Um, but as I said, you know that all that mess that I had underneath there, you can't see it and the mess underneath the um flamingo to the back of him you can't see him because he doesn't go that far so that's the saving grace at least so yeah so there we go so all we need to do now is add the words pull on there if you want to you can round your corners which i think i probably would have done i don't know if i can now that i've stuck two pieces together and again it's something that you probably should do before you stick it on the card but it kind of sums up how my day is going I'm going to be really brave and I'm going to see if I can corner round. Um, okay, so I have successfully managed to round my corners. It's just a shame you've got that line of that card. But if I take it off, it's going to make more mess than if I leave it on. So I'm just going to have to deal with it. Okay, so I found some peel-offs from ages ago. Anything would work. If you want to stamp a pull, you can. If you want to write it, if you've got neat handwriting, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. I'm actually going to do it. I was going to do it on top of each other. But these are quite skinny, so I'm actually going to turn it and just write it on that way. Not write it, stick it on that way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so there we have it. Finally, we got there. So there we go, we pull. Now, obviously, I haven't got a greeting on the front, so I'll probably go ahead and add a happy birthday greeting somewhere. Not quite sure where, but I will add one somewhere. Okay, so that's uh, that's my video for today um it wasn't didn't go as smoothly as i wanted it to go but i kind of knew that this card was going to be a bit of a trouble i have to say um as i said i've been putting it off for years and years and years um yeah i don't think i shall be i had a i had a craft lady bless her she's not with us anymore but i had a craft lady and she always used to say well i won't be making 10 dozen of those and i can accurately say that sums up this card I won't be making 10 dozen of these. I mean, I've made four, so I'm almost on to half a dozen, but I won't be making any more. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, but yeah, it's just one of those, you know, you have you have cards where you can't get your head around. This was one of those. It's annoying because it's really satisfying card to make. Like as in, once you've made it, to actually sit and do this, I could sit and do this all day. This is like a fidget toy for me. So yeah, hopefully you'll have more um, success with it. As I said, if you if it's your thing and you can fathom it out, you can go ahead and have a play, go for larger sizes, you can branch out and go for different shapes. You can buy dies that actually cut it all out for you. I know Crafter's Companion did a whole set of dies that actually cut it out for you. If I can find them, I'll link them in the description below as well, um, just in case you want to go for that easy option. Uh, but yeah, if you don't and you want to do it yourself, then you can. So hopefully you'll have a go. Um, hopefully you'll be more successful than I was. I mean, I did come out with a card at the end of it, so that's something. That's definitely a plus right now. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you'll have a go. And uh, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next time. Bye!